Professor G, normally we think of progress as a good thing, but in terms of MS, it's the opposite. How do you describe MS progression? What happens is every time you have a lesion in a pathway, it actually causes the, uh, the nerves to demyelinate and it cuts some of those nerves and those nerves die off and the surviving nerves then have to recover function. With the first attack, you may lose 10% of your nerve fibers in a pathway. The important thing is redundancy in a pathway. There's always more nerves than you require. And so you'll get back to normal, but you've lost 10% of your nerves. And the next time you have it, you'll lose another 15. And eventually it's not enough reserve, so you don't recover. And that's how disability um, happens. But also what happens is those, those lesions never get back to normal. Those surviving nerve fibers having to work overtime or extra to, to compensate for the previous damage also die off over time. And that often causes a slow worsening. When I was diagnosed in 2001, it was with what we called relapsing remitting MS. I noticed that after a long run, I would be dragging my feet, I would get tired, but that would never show up in a clinical examination. But now, 20 years later, I'm walking with a mobility aid. Is that because of that very first attack? Possibly, yeah. And I wouldn't say it's one lesion or maybe quite a few that's doing it. Um, all the other processes that are ongoing that we don't really understand a lot about yet. But I agree, completely agree with you. I like to call it smoldering because when you look under the microscope, there is ongoing inflammation in those lesions that, that um, probably needs to be addressed by um, new additional add-on treatments. But the best way to restore function is rehabilitation, exercise. It's the bottom line. If you don't use it, you lose it. Are there treatments for people with so-called progressive or worsening MS? Yes, there are. Over the last three or four years, uh, two treatments have been licensed. They work much better when given earlier in people that still have ongoing inflammation in their brain. We see uh, new lesions on MRI coming or possibly superimposed relapses. So in most countries, those treatments, although they are licensed and available for people with primary and secondary progressive, there's often an adjective in front saying active primary progressive and active secondary progressive. And what they mean by that is you have to show evidence uh, with frequent MRI scans or clinically that they're having ongoing inflammation. In terms of progression or worsening, does it ever stop? I wish I could be honest with you and say it does stop. I, uh, I don't know. The group of patients that we've treated very, very early, I mean, really within the first year of onset of symptoms with something like alumtuzuma, a large number of those patients now have gone 10 or more years and they look completely normal in the sense that they haven't had any new attacks and they are fully functional. But I'm not sure 10 years is long enough. We need to be able to see what happens at 15, 20, 25 years. Even some doctors think there's nothing more to be done when their MS reaches this stage. Why is it important to keep seeking care, keep going to appointments and keep getting MRIs? One of the reasons is we've got lots of data that's emerged from watching what happens in trials to say that's wrong. So one of the things we have is I call them the EDSS blinkers. So people who've got MS will learn about this scale. It's called the expanded disability status scale. It's the way we rate disability in people with MS and it's used in all our clinical trials. The problem about that scale is as you get further along it, it's completely dominated by walking. Once you get to 6, 6.5, those particular nerve fibers to the lower limbs are very damaged and you've lost a lot of them already. And so it's very difficult to show a treatment effect uh, in that particular pathway. And it's got to do with the length because the nerve fibers to the lower limbs are the longest. So they've got more chance of being hit. The nerve fibers to the arms and to your speech and swallowing are much shorter and less chance of being hit. And so when you actually ignore the lower limbs and you start looking at hand function, you begin to realize that these treatments are having an effect even in that population of patients on hand function. To give up on people because you don't show a treatment effect on the lower limbs is missing the point. I 100% agree. I think that a lot of people at the time of diagnosis are told most people with MS don't end up in a wheelchair. And I feel like that language is so problematic because wheelchair use isn't the end. And I mean, there's there's so much more that can that can still happen. And your arms become so much more important when when you need them to, to get around. All MS is progressive from the start and not in a good way. Even if you have good recovery from a relapse, damage can still be happening. Preventing attacks in the first place is key to minimizing your risk of disability. The best way to recover function after attacks is physiotherapy. Thanks so much for watching. For more content on MS, from treatments and diagnosis to mobility and sex, Check out the rest of MS 101.